Grab Holdings reported their latest quarterly figures Monday after the market closed. A beat across the board, great performance by the company at the time of making this video. Stock is up around 7.3% or so. Year to date, the stock will be up above 30%, has a market cap closer to $20 billion. Now, we've talked about Grab a couple of weeks ago. First time I covered that company. I mean, I used that company, I think, close to 10 years ago in Thailand to actually grab a cap. Now, since then, I completely forgot about the company, but it's a very, very interesting one to follow and actually a pretty powerful one and fast growing as well. Now, to be honest, we in the West, it's about time we have such apps, right? One app where you can do everything, financial stuff, financial services, order food, supermarket, order a ride, etc., etc. Yes, Uber can do it, to be honest, but then again, they decided to make Uber Eats and Uber Uber two different apps. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to make the user experience worse for the user because when you go on Uber, you basically just want someone to pick you up and not get ads for, well, ice cream or cheese or whatnot. Okay, but if it works so well in Asia, because Grab is not the only super app there. In China, you have, I believe, WeChat and it works pretty well, right? Okay, maybe we don't want monopolies and stuff like that because again, one super app to rule them all. Where's the competitiveness in all of that? Or maybe everybody has to become a super app. Huh, maybe. Anyways, let's discuss Grab. Let's go over their earnings results. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we really appreciate that. We're already covered probably by now Shopify and C Limited. Those videos will be in the top right corner. If you enjoy this type of videos, subscribe. We're trying to reach 60,000 subscribers. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. As always, I want to start with comments from management. So third quarter 2024 was a strong quarter for us as investments we made across the business drove an acceleration of our on-demand GMV growth. We are serving more users than ever before with 42 monthly transacting users on our platform. We remain bullish on the long-term growth outlook of Southeast Asia and are firing on all cylinders to capture the strong user demand trends, improve income opportunities for ecosystem partners and drive tech-led innovations to enhance the efficiency of our marketplace. As for the CFO, we delivered our 11 consecutive quarter of adjusted EBITDA improvement, our second positive profit for the quarter and the highest quarterly adjusted free cash flow to date for the business. With the strong momentum we are seeing across the business heading into the end of the year, we expect to deliver sequential on-demand GMV growth in the fourth quarter and are raising our full year 2024 group revenue and group adjusted EBITDA outlook. Great comments. Now, one thing in the earnings call that blew my mind was basically this. We're about four times larger than our next biggest competitor in the region. We are getting better operating leverage across our cost base. So we don't comment on category position country by country, but I can confirm that we're still approximately four times larger than our next largest competitor in the region, the region being Southeast Asia, which when you think of it, it's quite a statement to make, right? And it basically shows you how strong their ecosystem is really is. And yeah, despite them already being close to $20 billion in market cap, I mean, Southeast Asia, <laughs> the, it's, it's pretty large. It's pretty large. So I do think there is some runway ahead. Looking at the cross-selling stuff that happens when you have a super app. So financial services and operational highlights, realizing synergies across food and marts. So they saw 1.7 times higher year-over-year -year GMV growth in Mart versus food, 4.9 times higher average order frequency among users who transacted in both food and Mart, 2.1 times higher retention rate among users who transacted in both food and Mart, and 60% of driver partners completed both food and Mart transactions. I mean, to be honest, I, I really don't know why Uber did not try this out. Maybe they did and I completely forgot, but it does seem like a no-brainer to put everything in one app. As for the mobility services here, they saw 30% year-over-year GMV growth from high-value mobility rides, 2.4 times higher GMV per ride on high-value mobility rides, 1.7 times higher revenue margins, and 3.3 times higher driver partners' earnings per ride. So as for the quarter, 
on-demand GMV increased 15% year over year. Group monthly transacting users increased 16% year over year. On-demand monthly transacting users increased 9% year over year. If we look at revenue, that's up 17% year over year. Operating loss improved 59% year over year. Still a loss though. Profit for the period was $15 million compared to $99 million for the quarter. Total segment adjusted EBITDA improved by 42% and adjusted EBITDA improved by 224% year over year. As for net cash from operating activities, operating cash flow, that's up 5% year over year and adjusted free cash flow is basically now $138 million compared to, well, negative 6 million sim quarter last year. If we look at the differences here between expenses, cost of revenue and revenue, so revenue is up 16.42%, cost of revenue only increased 9% and all the expenses that you're seeing right here increased just 3.54%. They then go over the different segments. So we're starting off here with deliveries. Delivery is up 16% year over year on a constant currency basis. Revenue wise, GMV is up also 16% and segment adjusted EBITDA is up 60% year over year for deliveries. If you look at mobility, revenue there is up 20% year over year. GMV for that segment is up 24% year over year on a constant currency basis and adjusted EBITDA up 18% year over year. Now, as for the financial services, and this is basically a question to you, the viewer, while revenue is up here 38% year over year on a constant currency basis, loan portfolio is up 81% year over year. How come that this is probably one of the only companies where financial services is not profitable or at least not profitable yet, right? It is becoming better, but still, why, why is it a loss in this case? Is it because they are going after unprofitable, unbanked clients, customers? Please enlighten me in the comment section below because to be honest, every time we see the financial services side of a business, it's usually the one that is quite profitable, right? That is helping the other parts of this business become, well, look a bit better overall. So I'm probably missing something here. So please let me know down in the comment section below. Then as for the outlook, they raised guidance. So 2024 revenue should grow now between 17 to 18% instead of 14 to 17%. As for group adjusted EBITDA to come now at 308 to 313 million dollars compared to between 250 to 270 million dollars and adjusted free cash flow remains unchanged. They expect it to be positive for the full year. And so doing a quick reverse DCF here, we got the trailing 12 months free cash flow, including this one. So that should be $474 million, terminal growth rate 4.37%. I don't decide it. I basically go to the 10 year bond yield. This is basically what as what the Mardorian does. So if he's wrong, then I'm wrong as well. So, okay. Discount rate is basically taking both of those things together, terminal growth rate plus implied equity risk premium, and you get this number. Here, I also have 3% dilution for the next 10 years. So you got the implied growth rate of 12.5% to justify today's price. Now, to be honest, this company is expected to grow revenue faster than that, and free cash flow should be growing a little bit faster than that as well. So you tell me, does it make sense to trade at these prices or should this be above $5 already? Plus, by the way, I do think that this company should have been buying way more shares when the stock was under $5, whether it's closer to four in the trees. I think the company could have retired way more shares, but okay, I don't decide. Again, solid performance, solid quarter. If we look at the stock, even before this earnings report, RSI was already overbought, but... As I keep repeating again and again, you can stay overbought for a longer period of time. So right now we're, we're back to prices not seen since, well, March of 2022. That's when you've got this huge red candle here on the weekly. Basically, the stock was cut in half, maybe even more. So yeah, we're going to be in uncharted territories a little bit. I mean, the overall market has gone up tremendously in the last week, so... I wouldn't mind if the market starts to go sideways for a while so things can cool off. So yeah, that's just me. Overall, Grab, very, very good performance, good company, no position in that company, but it, it has been 
on my watch list since the first video I made about it a couple of weeks ago. But very, very interesting company to follow. I know some of you own it, so do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.